Stephen, it's great to have you back on the Pink Couch. Always a good opportunity to check in and see what's happening in the airline side of things. And Delta really does do things differently. How is it possible in such a very large and diverse organization to maintain that kind of environment, working environment? Great question. You know, we're a global employee, a global company with over 80,000 employees. 80, so to yeah. harness the energy of 80,000 people to move in the right in one direction is really, really difficult. And internally, we have something called a flight plan. Mm -hmm. So the 80,000 global employees are all aligned to the flight plan to move the business forward. And of course, there are elements within the flight plan that are very specific, say to sales, but each, an individ each individual within the organization knows exactly what's expected from them. So we all work towards the flight plan and also this element of servant leadership comes into play. So instead of managing the business from the bottom up, which is probably pretty typical, or from the top down, sure. which is very typical, we manage our business from the bottom up. So do you think, from your perspective, you've had a different um, backgrounds, different careers in the industry, that's an opportunity for other businesses to adopt? Is How easy would that be? Look, it's not easy to adopt, but certainly if we can do it with 80,000 <laughs> global employees, you know, certainly a travel agency with 10 employees can certainly uh, make this shift and change in culture. And it's really the culture that drives the business and ultimately it's the culture that drives the result. And it brings out a lot of innovations, the different ways of thinking and how problem solving and, and instead of, well, you say, what is it, getting to yes? Getting yeah, so internally we have this, this statement of how can we get to yes? So instead of taking the no route, which is obviously the much easier way to do it, we sit around the table collectively and we say, how do we get to yes? So it's, it's really powerful, it really is. It is very powerful. Now, for yourself, mm -hmm. you in Canada are dealing with four different brands. Yes. Um, how do you do that? Uh, it's, <laughs> How do you prioritize? I, I, keep, I keep telling friends and family and anybody who'll listen that it's a little <laughs> bit like working for the United Nations. So, of course, I'm Canadian. I report into an American carrier, so I've got great U.S. colleagues. But we also represent our joint venture partners in the market, Air France, KLM, and Alitalia. So, you know, a lot of varied interests, but at the end of the day, we're all in it together. We're in it to win it, as we like to say <laughs> as well. And it's just a matter of just really working on the things that are going to make a difference to the business. So instead of being... Uh, consumed by a lot of noise that can typically go around any organization. You just focus on the um, points where you can actually make a difference and turn the dial. Wow. And so how is the current, rather problematic season shaping sure. up? The environment is uh, quite interesting. So mm -hmm. from a Delta perspective, we continue to add capacity to Canada. We're upgaging our equipment, uh, bringing in some mainline equipment. It's really a good news story from a Delta perspective. Uh, KLM and Alitalia. We just came off of launching two new routes last summer who are, and these two new routes are looked internally as being true success stories. So as we're looking to launch new routes, they actually bring up Edmonton, Amsterdam and Vancouver, Paris as really great examples. So we continue to see really nice success. And Alitalia has a brand new product in the market as well. So, you know, we've all, we, we always have something really cool and interesting and innovative to talk to, to the trade about. And you're not finding that there is an overcapacity this season? There is an overcapacity, mainly to Europe, so there are a lot of seats out there to sell, but we've managed to uh, balance uh, our offering to the market. So from a joint venture perspective, we're holding our own and we're doing well. And is there more, do you see more of a demand for incoming traffic, even from the States, but uh, from Europe as well? Yep, so you would think that with the low Canadian dollar, Canada's obviously now uh, quite a interesting market for people to come travel to and so we're certainly seeing that yeah. from not only the US but also from Europe. Not great for, for the uh, businesses here that are selling I suppose so much but from an overall airline perspective that right. if it balances out. At the end of the day it's about root performance and root profitability. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's a business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well thank you so much and do come back and see us and share some of your perspectives again. Soon. Anytime. Okay, Anytime. Thanks.